Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.5.1 has been out for a couple weeks at this point. Many have been using this full time and there's even more to talk about since the iOS 17.5.1 is out what's new video. We'll talk about different bugs and other issues going on as well as the overall experience since I've been using it full time and many of you have as well. We'll take a look at your experience based on the YouTube community poll where there's over 18,000 votes and 337 comments. I've read every single comment to determine what the overall experience is like and how it's progressing over time. But first, let's talk about some Apple news. Many have been waiting for local states and governments to allow digital IDs through the Apple Wallet app. If we go into the wallet, we've only had a few different states that have participated. It's up to the states to determine if they want to join and work with Apple. However, we haven't seen any new ones join in quite some time. But this time around, another country is joining, where Japan is actually gaining the ability to use the My Number Card digital IDs and Apple Wallet late next spring. So this is something that's been announced. It looks like they'll be adding it to digital IDs and your Apple wallet. I'm not sure when other states will be added or other countries, but it's up to them to work with Apple to do that. Now, last week, Apple brought tap to pay through Apple pay to different countries such as Japan and Canada. And this week, Apple launched the same feature in Italy. So that's now available with tap to pay that allows you to pay from one phone to another through a business. So that's something that's now available in those three countries. The first store in Malaysia is opening on June 22nd. Apple actually has a website here where it's called Apple, the exchange TRX. It says it's opening June 22nd at 10 AM. And if you scroll down, you can see some new wallpaper here. So if you want to get those, I'll link this in the description below, even though this isn't in the United States, you can still have access to this. So if you want to check out those wallpaper, they're available. Apple TV should be coming to Android in the future as Apple actually recently listed some job openings for Apple TV with Android. You can see it here, careers at Apple, Android software engineer, Apple TV app. So it looks like they're wanting to bring this to more devices. It makes sense. They're already bringing it to other TVs to integrate it into Android, just like Apple music shouldn't be that big of a deal. Now, WWDC is just about a week away and Apple has actually shared a new official music playlist to go along with it. If we go into Apple music, you'll see that I have it here where it says WWDC 24 hello and has a different playlist for this particular upcoming event. So that's great to see. And I'll link that in the description. If you want to check it out yourself, if you want to see a countdown or where you can actually watch Apple's WWDC 2024 with all the latest news, just go to apple.com, scroll down, and you'll see it here where it says WWDC 24 on June 10th. That's where we expect to see all of the latest things, including iOS 18. And there's been a lot of news about iOS 18 over the past few days, just like as we get closer to the launch every year, we hear more and more. And this year we're hearing more about it as far as AI features coming to iOS 18 that I mentioned in a video earlier the other day, and many things that will be on device. But it looks like those things that are going to be on device with AI may be limited to the iPhone 15 Pro series. We don't know all the details just yet, but according to Mark Gurman, that could be something that we're going to have it limited to where it may have to offload similar features if you don't have one of the latest chipsets. But now for some great news, the latest from Mark Gurman is that there will be an updated settings app and finally an updated control center. So control center, not necessarily is going to get a redesign, but instead would be updated, whether that means it's better categorized, has more customization or something else. We don't know, but either way, Apple's been working on it and multiple sources are reporting this. Now, also we're seeing an updated settings pane, and we've heard about this with Mac OS 15 as well. So maybe some different categorization. Apple's changed this throughout the years to make it full width, and then they've brought it back. So we can expect some changes there. And then Mac rumors the other day also said that iMessage will be gaining new text effects where you could animate individual words. So if we go into iMessage and maybe we type the word birthday, we would be able not just to have emoji that go along with it, but maybe a text animation, different screen effects, or just be able to animate the word specifically itself. These are all things we expect to be in the future to sort of go along with this make sense. And it would fit perfectly within iMessage. Of course, we've heard about some features coming already. Apple's announced them as far as accessibility features with eye tracking, vocal shortcuts, and much more. So those things are all going to be launching with iOS 18 with music haptics, but of course, many more features are here to follow along with customization to the home screen and much more. It is looking like it's going to be one of the biggest releases ever. So hopefully it lives up to all of the different hype.
Now, as far as releases this week, Apple actually stopped signing iOS 17.5 and iPadOS 17.5. That means you can no longer downgrade to those versions. That leaves us with iOS 17.5.1, and we haven't seen anything new since. So it's a little odd that we haven't seen anything new, and we only have one version to downgrade to. We still haven't seen iOS 17.6 beta 1, or maybe we're going to see an iOS 17.5.2 before iOS 18. Either way, it's been an odd little sort of couple weeks where we haven't had a lot of releases. We thought we'd see iOS 17.6 beta one by now, but maybe they'll release it next week. We don't really know at this point as typically Apple releases those right after the previous update. We expected it right after iOS 17.5, usually the day after, and we haven't seen it. So maybe we'll have it next week. Maybe they'll wait until iOS 18 betas are released. We just don't know, but we do know it's in testing, so we could see it soon. Apple also released some new AirPods updates this week. And with those updates, they updated AirPods Pro 2, Lightning, and USB-C versions. So if we go in here, scroll to the bottom, you'll see the update brought us to version 6F7. That particular version is what it should be on. And you can see the case version here where it's actually updated since I did the video on it to version 65.3.0. So it looks like they've updated the case and the ear pods or air pods rather. And it seems to have helped overall connectivity as well as switching between devices. I haven't really noticed any other differences, but let me know if you've found anything to be different or better in the comments below. Now, while it's quite surprising, we haven't had iOS 17.6 beta one. It's also very surprising how bad some of the bugs have become in iOS 17.5 and 17.5.1. Apple initially fixed that issue where the deleted photos would show up and then they sort of would just stay there. They fix that. You can redelete them and they won't show up again, but there's still a lot of surprising bugs that still remain. The alarm bug is probably the biggest one where sometimes the alarm isn't going off properly and it's not waking people up. Apple has said that they will fix this in a future update. They've acknowledged the issue, but they haven't pushed out a fix for it yet. So maybe, as I mentioned before, iOS 17.5.2 or maybe iOS 17.6. Either way, it's very odd that they haven't really pushed anything out to fix that yet. There's also some other issues that are pretty major where people can't make phone calls or they just drop immediately. And while some people thought this could have something to do with your carrier, it seems to be related to iPhones as people on Android or other versions of iOS 17 aren't seeming to have that issue. So it looks like it's specific to these latest versions. Also, connectivity is having issues for me personally and some others where it just sort of drops. So you'll see I have one bar now. So if I turn off Wi-Fi, it works okay. Then we'll jump up, jump back down. And I've noticed this on the iPad as well. Running speed test, I've seen similar things where if you go into speed test, maybe you'll have fast speeds for download. It'll start out fast for upload and then just drop to almost nothing for the upload. This seems to be an ongoing issue we're seeing over and over with iOS 17.5 and 17.5.1. To go along with that, GPS is sometimes not working properly on things such as Google Maps. The information's not correct. Just the location will just jump all over the place. And Wi-Fi also seems to be a huge issue for a lot of people. If we go into Wi-Fi, I often find that depending on where I am in my house, sometimes I have to turn it off and back on to just have it reconnect. I've noticed the same behavior on my iPad with iPadOS 17.5.1 as well. Another major bug is voice controls sometimes skip words. And then also I've found recently that files is not synchronizing across iCloud. So if I save something on my Mac, typically it will show up in files. They're just not syncing and I have no fix for this. Everything appears to be syncing, but information just isn't there. I mentioned last week how some people are having issues with the Apple Pencil Pro unpairing itself and then you can't repair it to the device. I've seen this from multiple people now and you typically have to bring your Apple Pencil Pro into an Apple store and they'll replace it for you. So it's an odd issue that seems to be fairly rare, but I've heard of it for at least three to four people so far. So if you do have that issue, make sure you bring it to Apple, then they can swap it out for you. But it seems to work okay for me, but some people just say when they reattach it, it won't work and they've wiped their device. Sometimes it works, other times it doesn't work at all and they need a full replacement. Now, other less important bugs seem to still be around such as the standby bug. So if you place your phone on a dock where it's MagSafe charge or it's just charging in the bottom here with the USB-C port and you're on the clock. Let's just lock it again. 
Now we're in standby mode. If you press and hold, you can't edit it after you've edited it a single time. So if you edit it just once and then you go back in, it won't allow you to do anything. I've seen this over and over and some people have said that they can still edit, but I'm wondering if that's the clock itself. You can edit some other screens, just not the clock itself. So if I go over, if I go to the widget screen, press and hold, I can actually edit this. I just can't edit the clock at all. So that's definitely a bug I've seen reported over and over. I've also submitted it in the feedback app. Other bugs that don't matter as much, but are just a little bit of an annoyance are squared off notifications. Sometimes they're squared and then they'll just jump to sort of rounded corners. Auto brightness seems to over brighten or sometimes still gives issues with the brightness overall. There's volume bug issues where it just jumps up and down and also the wallpaper dimming bug. So if I swipe home, sometimes it sort of desaturates. So some people see this worse than others, but it's definitely still there. And then weather keeps asking permission to use location. These are all small bugs compared to the other ones I mentioned, but still much of an annoyance for something that should be fairly mature at this point. So maybe Apple's just pushing everything off to really upgrade everything with iOS 18 and bring stability, but we really just don't know at this point. When it comes to camera improvements, I'm not seeing any difference from this week to last week, but take a look at a few different photos here, as you can see, and I really don't see any difference whatsoever between 17.5 or 17.5.1. Everything looks basically the same. When it comes to performance, most people still report that it's doing quite well. In fact, Geekbench shows me that, and I'll show you that in a moment, but overall performance, whether it's the iPhone 11, the iPhone 15 pro max seems to be pretty good for me. I haven't had it slow down. However, I have had to restart the device because of odd bugs. So that may have helped, but in general, things like ProMotion and scrolling going into different applications seem to load fast going into the home screen here scrolling, going into music, just going into apps in general, everything seems to be as you would expect nice and fast. So that's great to see. As far as the overall heat, well, I haven't had my device heat up hardly at all this time around. However, I am seeing more and more complaints, maybe in hotter environments where it seems to be abnormally hot, just doing nothing. Now I haven't seen that, but let me just show you with the thermal camera again. And these are both kind of sitting at idle. Now the one I've been using in the video, is it about 32 to 32.5 degrees Celsius. And the one that's been sitting idle is at about 29.5 degrees Celsius. And again, in Fahrenheit, we're at about 91 degrees Fahrenheit compared to the one sitting at idle around 86.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So both are staying fairly cool considering we're not doing a whole lot with them. I am demonstrating on one of them and not the other. However, the one on the left in natural titanium even has a screen protector on it and it's staying fairly cool. Now, when it comes to battery life, this is an area where I haven't seen it really improve a whole lot. In fact, many people say that it's been getting worse. I don't know that I've necessarily seen that myself, but it's definitely having a problem getting through the day. If we go down to battery within settings and then under battery health, I'm down to 97% at 200 cycles. And that's about normal from what I'm seeing from others. And if you take a look here, you'll see similar results from coconut battery. However, it does say typically that I have a higher maximum capacity. So it seems to be a little bit better there, but as far as overall battery life today, I've had one hour and 50 minutes of screen active time, one hour and 59 minutes of screen idle time. And you'll see I'm down to, well, I've used about 23% of my battery. If we take a look at yesterday, I had two hours and 21 minutes of screen active time and used almost 70% of my battery. Typically it's not getting me through a day. It just depends on the day. The day before was four hours and 35 minutes of screen active time, but I had to plug it in to get that amount to show up. So I've definitely been having some odd issues. However, with the iPad, it seems to be lasting me without an issue. So it really varies depending on device and how you're using it and what apps you're using. As far as benchmark scores, if we go into Geekbench 6, I actually scored much higher than I did before with 2,944 for single core, 7,280 for multi-core. If we go back and take a look at the history, when I ran this before, it's definitely a little bit higher than pretty much any result I've had, both single and multi-core scores. So I would say it's doing pretty well as far as overall performance and definitely better than what we've seen in the past. This is true on older devices as well.
Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.5.1, well, I typically recommend it just because of the security issues that are fixed with iOS 17.5. Apple posted them with 17.5. However, there weren't any significant upgrades with 17.5.1, but I don't think you'll see a difference if you're on 17.5 upgrading to 17.5.1. However, if you're on previous versions, you'll have to weigh the overall security concerns with reliability. Because there are security updates with 17.5, I typically recommend it, but if you're concerned about just usability and not getting through the day, you may want to hold off. It just depends on how you use your device. Now let's go ahead and take a look at what some of you had to say. Angelaine Binger 7562 said, I was hoping the battery drain on my 15 Pro Max with 17.5.1 would level out after a few days. Updated apps restarted phone and still a ridiculous fast drain. Bugs for me are blurry images and Instagram and other apps, connectivity, freezing sites, each update gets worse, not better, but I keep updating, hoping things improve. I'm losing it with Apple and this is over an overpriced phone. I think I start with Apple four and it's the worst phone and software upgrade for me. I still don't like the camera and besides scrolling apps and calendar, the camera is my main reason for a smartphone, but the battery is the worst. My 11 pro max was the best. Marcel three, eight, two, five said runs really smooth on my iPhone 11 pro max and battery life battery maximum capacity is 87% and lasts about the same amount of time with the new update. Very pleased with 17.5.1. Crane Hawk pilot said, I don't see why everyone is complaining. My battery is fine. In fact, better than before. It's not slow either. No calling Wi-Fi or Bluetooth problems. Even my Apple watch S nines battery drainage is back to normal and lasts a while. Smart Himanshu said, hi Aaron. I've been seeing the issue with device heating automatically without running any heavy tasks, maybe because it's summer, but mostly my device 14 plus is heating when used normally. Apart from that, I have seen the GPS issue where it couldn't even detect the location on Google maps. It happens. And then after a restart, it works again. TTS. 292 said iOS 17.5.1 is running really smooth on my iPhone 11. I don't have any bugs or issues. I heard about the photos bug, but I haven't experienced it so far myself, but I'm happy that I did update just for the sake of the device and all those security patches that Apple has to offer. Can't wait until WWDC 24. We're only two weeks away and I'm excited. Neil Aurora 2633 said all the same bugs, in fact, worse. Battery drain, cellular connectivity, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth doesn't work properly. Calls dropped, Safari freezes, GPS does load or locate properly. Face ID sometimes locks up, overheating, stuttering when pull down control center, sometimes takes so many presses to wake the phone up. Weather doesn't locate properly. And you'll see 96 people gave it a thumbs up. Terrence Benjamin 7241 said, it's been super great on my iPhone 13 Pro Max. So that's everything with iOS 17.5.1. Hopefully we get an update soon as you'll see the overall experience is very greatly depending on who's using it and what device it is, what apps they have installed, and even how they charge it sometimes whether that's overnight noticing battery drain or more. So some really odd bugs here that I hope they fix, especially that alarm bug and the standby mode bug, but hopefully we'll get some fixes pretty soon with iOS 17.5.2 or iOS 17.6. Let me know how your experience has been in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.